last lecture we talked about underpinning of York Minister that these cracks were visible and how there was an unequal settlement, differential settlement of this and how it was restored back and that, uh, that it was in peril and the danger was averted and it is still continuing. We will talk about the other disaster which struck York Minister in 1984. Uh, we have seen that in history, that is a beautiful structure, what is happening today. Remember that there was a fire which happened in 1984. Now, when this fire happened, this, uh, all the churches, they have beautiful stained glass, York has beautiful stained glass. And during the Second World War, what happened, that uh, it was realized that many of these stained glasses were in danger. So, uh, from the various churches all over England, so they were taken down and they were uh, stored in various places uh, to uh, avoid the damage due to the war. And during the war and after the war, it was realized that many of the stained glass pens were not in a good condition, their joints were not in good condi condition and they have been replaced, the different section, different parts have been replaced over the year. So, there was an attempt and York was a pioneer in that field, York Glaciers Trust was formed and they were already taking up the restoration of the stained glass. Now, it was placed there, it was a training also was inbuilt there. So, before this 1984 fire happened, uh, the already the many of the stained glass parts of stained glass windows uh, were restored. So, and when this uh, the rose window which is significantly very important, symbolically very important uh, for the Christians, uh, it has a sacred value and that actually was recently just before that was restored because of the joints, the stained glass panes were put back into position, the joints were strengthened. But then 94 it happened. The devastation as you can see, the devastation caused by a lightning bolt, it happened due to a lightning, so nobody can help that, which set the fire to York Minister South Transept and it destroying his roof, the entire roof collapsed and causing 2.2 5 million of pounds worth of damage and this is the scenario which happened. Now, just uh, let me take this opportunity to, to remind you that we also talked about the Coventry Cathedral where the roof collapsed due to the war. We also talked about Warsaw and uh, there are different approaches which were taken for the Coventry Cathedral. York actually decided to restore everything. So, right from the stained glass window to this roof which is totally destroyed. So, it is another approach which has been taken, but while doing the stained glass window, it is again a very exemplary ex, um, uh, case uh, which need to be studied. Now, this is a scenario of the roof window after the fire. In the, in the fire, many of the soldered joints melted because of the high heat, but the lead did not because you remember that just before that the joints have been strengthened, they were trying to replace and they strengthened it. So, it was in quite a good condition. So, what happened that uh, the, though the soldered joints melted, but the lead did not. So, they were uh, these glass panes were in place. Uh, and this is the this is what happened after the fire. And this is when the rose window has been restored. Now, when we are talking about a restore and we see that these glass pins have the joints are still there, but the glass pin have sort of are in a very dangerous situation, uh, what could have been done? The glass pins could have been uh, made afresh, uh, the rose window, the new stained glass could have come up, but something different happened here. But before we discuss that what has happened, what are the restoration measure was taken for this stained glass window, let us see what is this about and what is the importance of the stained glass window. This goes back to early 16th century in date, it was the symbol of the house of Tudor. These are generally made by fixing of glass into channel strips of lead which are held together with the solder. As you uh, we have already discussed, the solder melted, but the lead were in place because of the um, very recent strengthening of that. In 2018, all the windows panels were removed from the cathedral's east front to allow for the conservation work. They replaced some of the broken parts or replaced the 
parts which were uh, not in harmony because as even in a glass when it breaks somebody tries to change that. So, if you see on a 15th centuries angel head probably uh, 12 centuries or 16th centuries uh, head will be replaced. So, there was some sort of a uh, anomaly which was there. So, during this conservation process they were all uh, taken care of and this conservation was in done in 2008. Uh, that is very recent, but before that as I say during the war the all the glass pens were taken down and the joints were restored. So, uh, they were in quite a good condition when 1984 uh, thing happened and it is still continuing. So, this 2008 what I am talking about this still the restoration or the conservation of glass pens were happening and finally, it was restored. But let us go back come back to the south transept story and the stained glass or the rose window uh, and the damage which happened due to the fire. As we discussed the window survived the fire because of the lead work, it was in sound condition because of the restoration between 1968 and 1970. The challenge in 1984 was the repair of the multi cracked glass. As you can see the, the team is carefully removing the rose window panels from that what we this, uh, saw after the fire. So, what happened is that after the fire in the close inspection a uh, leader of that York Glacier Strat, Peter Gibson, Mr. Peter Gibson when he went up and saw he found that he is the Peter Gibson, he, he started working there when he was just very young at the age of 16, he was a part of the Eau Glacier Start and he was the person who really gave the leadership to this restoration of the stained glass window. So, according to him what happened, I mean uh, we listened to him and he has uh, different write ups and other when he sort of start recollecting the incident that happened. He said when he was called that this has happened during the fire the fire brigade personnel put him on the ladder and he went up and inspected closely to see that what has happened to this stained glass. He found that the glasses are in position, but there are minute cracks in the glass because of the temperature, but they were in place and they were not fallen apart. So, that was the decision that what to do about how to restore that rose window or the stained glass window. He talked to various experts, various options were tried out and finally, what was decided is to repair the multi crack glass not to replace the multi crack glass. So, repair the multi crack glass how what how it can be happened. So, what he did is that to preserve the glass each piece of the original glass which was cracked it was consolidated by injecting uh, adhesive and then that glass was sandwiched between two layers of clear glass and cut to the same size and shape. So, that original glass remained consolidated with injecting an adhesive fluid and then it was put in between a sandwich in between the two clear glass and for each and every piece it was done. That has to be done thousands of time because it is rose window was made up of 8000 individual pieces of glass. So, each part had to be taken down consolidated by injecting and then it has to be sandwiched and then it has to be put apart. It is a very laborious process, it took years, but that was decided not to take the easy option to replace the glass with a new one. Because if you go back to the ethics of conservation, it is that if it is possible to repair, then do that. If it is possible to consolidate, then do not restore. So, the consoli consolidation was done. So, the multi crack pieces now are in a Tudor sandwich, and then all the panels were replaced and then put back into the position. So, this is after that it has been put back into the position and the, it was put back in place in readiness for 4th November 1988 and nobody I mean I heard Peter Gibson saying that if when the visitors come they look up they just see the rose window, but they do not know what has happened the amount of labor the amount of care and preservation items which have happened and they are all recorded they are all displayed when one goes through the museum that what is the story behind that. 
So, this is a wonderful example and a very brave example of consolidation what we had talked about when we talked about the divergent approaches of conservation. But you also remember that when the fire took place, it is not only the rose window which got damaged, the, the entire roof collapsed if you remember that the scenario. So, the roof had to be in this case it was restored or reconstructed, a new roof came up. The people from all over England during the Her Majesty the Queen also donated the timber and uh, with that it took some years to restore the south transept. So, this was the south transept when the, you can see the entire roof is has collapsed and this is what it is today. Entire thing has been restored to with to its full glory with all the decorations and everything. But there is also an interesting story in when the decoration was happening. You see that there are these bosses, the roof bosses, which is called the roof bosses, that this one. This has to be made, the entire roof had to be made according to the original design. But there is something which very interesting thing happened while doing this uh, roof bosses. They wanted to include something new and to include the younger generation. So, there was a design competition uh, which was organized by BBC's television Blue Peter program where the design for these bosses were asked from many people and specially the children. And as you can see a very interesting, they cannot change the size, but they can change the design. So, very interesting design which you can see here is the a man going on to the moon and this was accepted. Why? Because from that, because it is a great height, you cannot really make out the full design, the shape, size and the color and all these things matters, but one cannot make out. So, the purpose of that is to involve the future generation, involve the people to incorporate their design. So, in that sense the design is not authentic and uh, it was a new design came up, but keeping the shape, size, the position and everything in and that is how that it sort of continues and go into the and the, when these young children comes, they know that their design has been there and they will feel that ok that is my design, they will grow up, they will talk proudly to their grandchildren and children about that how this design competition, this is what is conservation all about. It is involving the people, involving the people, the future generation, the present generation and so, one can question that is not authentic, but it does not matter because the entire roof collapsed and it has to be restored. But in that process, some creative innovative idea was there that how to involve and how the past, present and the future continues. And that is why it is a fantastic example of the conservation where the rose window with a lot of difficulty, a lot of money, lot of patience and a lot of uh, sort of a work, man hours was done to restore the rose uh, window, the stained glass window to sandwich the fragmented pieces, an example of consolidation where one could have taken a shortcut, nobody would have understood, but that is not the purpose of conservation. Here also the entire roof has been restored, right? everything anew has been done because it is a cathedral which is in use and it is very important as a religious place also. And then how to incorporate the new design into old design and to combine the two and to go and continue the journey for future. So, York minister and it still continues, there are a lot of restoration is still going on, a lot of funds come from the various sources and it is a matter of pride. So, these are two very important examples that how York minister is functioning. There that rose window is one of the case of restoration of the rose uh, stained glass, but there are the other stained glasses which are being continuously restored and 
to keep it and preserve it in place and it still continues as a very important tourist place, a religious place, a place of pride for not only for the people who are staying in Yor, but from all over and people from all over the world come and visit not only this place, but the undercroft to uh, which is a very interactive museum to understand what is the history in that layers of history which is stored and which the York minister goes on telling about that. And this is what is the also the role of a place. It has taken a new role apart from being just a sacred place, a cathedral. And this is the two very important instances of York minister restoration. Thank you. So, but here what you see that there is an old print of a New York minister, but this is also not the old story. There is a new part and this journey continues.